South Florida is home to both Atlantic and Caribbean waters, including threats to our coral reefs. Florida 24 Network reporter Sophia Hernandez continues her reporting on the state of our seas with an in-depth look at the problems and solutions facing these all-important creatures. We've never seen anything like it. Andrew Baker, a professor of marine biology and ecology at the University of Miami's Rosenstiel School, is talking about the marine heat wave of 2023, the culprit of the biggest coral bleaching event Florida has ever seen. Here in Florida, the last time we had a, a sort of a big bleaching event was actually back in 2014, which is nine years ago. And in the last nine years, we haven't had a major bleaching event in Florida. The one that we experienced beginning in July of 2023 uh, is off the charts. It's unprecedented, both in terms of how bad it is, but more importantly, in how early in the year it occurred. Coral bleaching tends to take place in the hottest months of the year, August and September. The corals are animals that are home to biodiversity, creating animal forests with algae inside. But when it gets too hot, the algae is no longer helpful, it's harmful. Inside them, the algae photosynthesize, they use sunlight energy to build that underwater city but they actually mean that the coral is very vulnerable to things that can uh, stress algae out. And one of those things is high temperatures. When corals get too hot, these partner algae that are inside their cells, instead of photosynthesizing and, and making uh, food from sun, from sunlight, they actually turn toxic and they begin to produce chemicals that are toxic to corals. And that causes the corals to want to get rid of the algae as quickly as possible in this process that we call coral bleaching. This summer, it's hurt areas like the Florida Keys. The water there is typically about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, this summer, it surpassed 92 degrees. The result, as of August, is 29 extensively bleached reefs and 39 and counting of reefs partially bleaching. My concern is that we will see the corals here off Miami and Broward, Fort Lauderdale, also begin to bleach very severely, just like they have in the Keys. It's why in July, researchers rescued our staghorn and elkhorn corals, removing them from the ocean to hatcheries to try and preserve as many as they could before disaster struck. Any more? But how can we protect the reefs that have yet to be affected? Baker's team of scientists have created multiple possible solutions, one of which is introducing corals to algae that are heat tolerant. It turns out that when corals have these particular kinds of algal symbionts, when they get heat stressed, they don't bleach and they don't die. They've already put this plan into action. One of the labs is home to hundreds of thousands of microscopic baby corals that are being tested in batches to see if they can hold up to the heat. Another thing they are trying, breeding corals with other corals. Can we source corals from areas around even the Caribbean, not just in Florida, that are home to corals that are naturally more thermally tolerant because they live in naturally warmer areas? Could we breed those parents against Florida parents? And will that produce uh, an offspring that we can introduce to cor Florida's coral reefs so that we actually restore some of the local diversity, but also introduce some of this new genetic diversity that might help them deal with a warmer climate? That's also a study that's already underway. So this is a coral restoration lab? For Baker, it's important that others understand not only how important the roughly 60 different species of corals in our region are to our unique biodiversity, but also how corals benefit us. I think the real under underappreciated value of coral reefs comes from uh, its value in protecting our coastlines from storms. And it's becoming increasingly uh, obvious that coral reefs just off of Miami-Dade County are worth hundreds of millions of dollars every year in avoided flood damages. Because reefs, by building these underwater breakwaters, are actually uh, causing wave energy to break offshore instead of breaking on the shoreline, on the beach. And that reduces the amount of coastal flooding that we see during storms. And it also reduces things like beach erosion, it's a job that is so important, the Department of Defense even took interest in it, contracting Baker and his partner Diego Lerman for five years to create a hybrid reef that could be used to protect our military bases, a nature-based solution that uses corals with conventional methods like concrete or seawalls. Here in Southeast Florida, we're incredibly low-lying. There's more exposed real estate to the impacts of storms in Miami-Dade and Broward County than almost anywhere else in the world. And yet we have coral reefs off of our coastlines and we should try to leverage their ability to protect all of that infrastructure. So there's really no better place in the world to try to develop these solutions uh, than Southeast Florida because we have so much to lose. 
So while Baker and his team continue to try and beat the heat clock, they know their work is essential. But still, so much has yet to be done. This is a mitigation strategy. We've got the hospital, the patients in the hospital room, and this is triage, keeping the patient alive. But ultimately, we've got to get the patient out of the hospital room, and that means making sure that the environment is suitable for these corals to survive into the future, and that really means taking action on climate. Sophia Hernandez reporting.